So what is the OAuth2 token introspection endpoint? Why is it useful and why you might need it? So in the RC, it says that it defines a protocol that allows authorized protected resources to query the authorization server to determine the set of metadata for a given token that was presented to them by an OAuth2 client. Okay, so that sounds a little bit complicated, but essentially what it means is the resource server is able to send a request to the authorization server and get whether the current uh, token is active, um, what rights or what access rights the current token has, and uh, what the authorization context is. Yeah, so just as a reminder, with OAuth, you have like a client, a third party client. So, for example, diagrams.net, this application I'm using right now, which is accessing like some protected resource, for example, my Google Drive. Yeah, so if I hit save, then this file is stored in my Google Drive. And the access token is received from an authorization server. And before we go on to kind of explain what this does, it's very important to distinguish um, the types of access tokens that you can have. So an access token can either be a structured token or it, so meaning self-contained, so that typically means a JSON web token or JSON web signature token to be precise, um, or it can be like an opaque string. So opaque string means, okay, it's just some random data that has like no meaning, Whereas in the structured token, um, actually the information or the relevant information is contained. Yeah, and in the original auth RFC, it says, well, okay, the string is usually opaque to the client. However, in practice, most of the time, it's just a JSON web token, simply because you don't have to use this token introspection endpoint all the time, which we're going to see right now. So let's assume we're not using JSON web tokens, okay? Let's assume this is like an opaque, opaque access token, meaning it's some random string with sufficient entropy. So if the client makes a, like the client gets some access token from the authorization server, and then tries to use this access token with the resource server, like with the Google Drive API. Now the thing is, if it's like an opaque token, the resource server does not know whether this is like valid at all and what access rights like you might have. Yeah. And that's why it's going to make like a call to the token introspection endpoint to the authorization server saying, uh, hey, man, look, I just got this token. Can you tell me whether this thing is valid? And uh, if yes, like what metadata it has, like uh, as, as mentioned, like above, right? What access rights does it have? What is the current uh, authorization context and so on? And yeah, the endpoint or the token introspection endpoint is a dedicated uh, endpoint in the authorization server. It can be anything. Uh, so for example, it could be post slash inspect. Um, so it is a post request, but the path itself can be anything. Um, typically, you find, or you find this path in the OAuth uh, metadata. Yeah, so there's like a URL which contains the authorization service metadata. And there you can find like the endpoint. And yeah, so you just send like this token there, you might send a token type hint to kind of say what type of token it is, but also not really necessary. So the authorization server should be able to do it uh, only based on the token that you send. Yeah, so you might send some complicated string that has like no meaning. And then if you do that, the authorization server is going to return you a response. And the metadata that we're talking about here is described in section 2.2 here introspection response and it sends you all of these things back and what is most relevant is like active right so is this token actually valid or is it revoked or is it uh, i don't know already expired and then all the things that you that are relevant what scopes does it have what's the client id when does it expire and so on so you can read through this entire list there's also like an example here like how it might respond yeah so you can see okay active true and then it contains like all the information in here so this is the case with an opaque token so there you have to make the request to the authorization server now if you're operating at google scale this is of course a problem because you're gonna for every single time like someone accesses the protected resource you will have to hit the authorization server and since they have so many apis this would be like very difficult to do Okay, so how does it look then for structured tokens or for JSON web tokens? Well, you might not, or in that case, you might not need it, but you could make use of it. Um, and in some cases, it even has some advantages to make use of it. 
Yeah, so if you have a structured token, then all the information is already contained in the token and it's already signed. So you take like this token, you send it like to the resource server. The resource server can locally validate whether this token is like valid and or whether it has been signed by the proper private key. Yeah, so resource server has a public key. The authorization server has the private key to create those tokens. If it's valid, the uh, protected resource might decide to process all of this without even asking the token introspection endpoint. However, for example, if the token has been uh, revoked before, so say the token is valid for 10 minutes, but after three minutes, the client sa tells the authorization server, hey, by the way, I don't want this token to be valid anymore. Then you have a situation, right? Because if you only validate like locally, you the request will just go through. Yeah, so the request will not get blocked. So that's why calling this token introspection endpoint can make sense, especially for uh, yeah, security critical actions to make sure that the token you get is yeah is like valid. So for example, you might say before you before you make a purchase, okay, you definitely send this token to the authorization server. This would be a hybrid way of handling things. Yeah, so for normal actions, you might not send it. But for everything that is critical, you might send it to the authorization server or you might even require the client to log in again before you buy something. So this is, for example, something that you could do if you run like some sort of e-commerce business. Cool. Yeah, so that's it pretty much with the token introspection endpoint. Allows you to get some metadata about the token. You take this thing, send it to the authorization server. If you structure tokens like most deployments actually do, you technically don't really need it because you can validate it locally. However, you might have some sort of propagation delay if the token is revoked or anything else is changed. Yeah, so this not only applies to token revocation, but also to write changes, right? So if you're like an admin and the token is valid for 10 minutes and after three minutes, someone says, oh yeah, actually you're not an admin anymore, then you would still have like admin rights with these uh, with the resource unless the resource checks with this uh, endpoint. Now, of course, since both things like the authorization server and the Google Drive API are run, uh, are run and owned by Google, they might even have some shared state so that something like this might not happen. So there might not even be a propagation delay. But if this is like run by different organizations, so for example, this is like some third party service that is doing the, the authorization, then you might have like this uh, propagation delay. Cool, yeah, so that's it pretty much. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.